Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Gospelicious Radio. This is episode 48. Yes. Episode 48. We're uh, we're so thankful that you guys have uh, tuned in or listening or watching on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Uh, we are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ one podcast at a time. My name is Adam Miner. On the other side of the table Hello. is the man, the myth, the legend, the reverend, Pastor Timothy R. Howard Jr. Oh, hey amen. Glad to be here, buddy. All right. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and you may notice, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, you wouldn't notice because... We haven't really mentioned it yet, but That's right. in the middle of us right now, sitting here at the table, we have the director of His Oaks, a residential faith-based opportunity for men with life-dominating behaviors, Trevor Primus. Amen. Hello. Glad Welcome. to have you here, brother. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Glad Thank to have you, you brother. We're happy to have you. This Feel free to, uh, to speak kind of closer to the mic there. We're having uh, some technical feel like adjustments here. I'm on some kind of submarine crew. I know. I know. That's right. We got Something. all of our little like... dials, and we even got a we even got our producer here yes. today. Matt producer with Matt us. is with He's us. With us, yes. Um, <laughs> Trevor, welcome, and we're we're really excited to have you this morning. Um, His Oaks, uh, for those of you who don't know, I I I, I mentioned it really really quickly just now. Um, uh, it's a it's a faith based uh, um, place where. Uh, Men who have, as as your, your website explains, life dominating behaviors can can gather together and uh, and kind of uh, be reborn spiritually. Is that a, a good way to put it? Yeah, that's that's exactly the way you want to put it. I call it um call it faith based opportunity for men, mm. and that's what it is. And basically, you know, it's the gospel. Amen. Um, we have one one way of going about things. That's biblical application. Um, we believe that any problem that anything that dominates a man's life or anybody's life is uh, those things are symptoms. Alcohol, drugs, violence, all those things are symptoms. Mm. And what is the problem is our fallen state. Right. We're born into a nature of sin. Amen. And then, you know, we've got that. And then we also make choices that lead us into that. Yeah. And the only way to come out of that is through the objective work of God. Right. The cross, Amen. you know. Amen. Yeah, I, we... You know, it, when it, it's tempting, uh, I, I think for someone who may just pa- might just pass his oaks or hear about his oaks in passing, um, who may not be familiar with the ministry, to uh, to call it like a, a rehab center or something like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's 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 the difference? Yeah. It, I mean, you just mentioned it's the gospel, obviously, but it, it, what's the difference between uh, a, a, a normal, say, secular rehab center and say what his oaks does? Hmm. Well, what what his oaks does is we. Um, we work with redemption. We don't work in recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing that ever yeah. worked for me, now I'm a guy, I could give you a little bit of my right. testimony. Sure. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're definitely right. going to get there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But um, it, the gospel was the only thing that, that worked for me. You know, um, at one point in my life, I found that I was a broken creation, and mm-hmm. the only way I could be fixed was by my creator. Amen. And he, you know, he bought me, he redeemed me, Jesus of Nazareth, by his blood, his redeeming blood, his body stood in for me at the cross, and he put me back into right standing with Christ. Amen. You know, with, with God, the Father. And then and I found myself justified, and then I could move on to sanctification, and right. that's what we teach. We teach discipleship. This is... A discipleship program we don't teach recovery we teach redemption and redemption is i turned something in for its value right at one point i didn't know what my value was like you know we right bottles and cans are a big part of what we do it's how we keep the cost down <laughs> so you take this can it's worthless an empty right. can's worthless to you you go there they give you a nickel it's a nickel, it's a nickel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know so this is this is redemption what i you know i was i was lost the men that come to us are lost. A lot of the world is lost. And then we're redeemed into our right standing with God. Amen. Praise you know? God. So. You you touched on it a little bit in your description there. What what are some of the issues these men are dealing with when they come to you? Well, well, there is a lot. And, and um, one of the things that we look at as staff is, so when they come to us, there's a 30-day orientation period. We call it a blackout period. Um to get that close. <laughs> they can't have um, no access. You know, we, we ask them to not have their phone, no Facebook, none of that for 30 days. And we're just identifying them and they're identifying us and they're getting to trust us. And we're getting to identify some of the issues. Now, um, there are many different issues. And sometimes we just look at 
at the man and see that some of these men are wounds. And what you've got to do with mm. wounds is you've got to know, you right. know, you've got to clean it out. You've got to know if it's right. got to be reopened. Right. You've got to know, do I bandage it at night? Do I take the bandage off and let it have air? So a lot of the guys that will come to us, they'll think that um, we'll lead them into brokenness. I mean, brokenness right. is a big part of the gospel. Right, it is. Because, but a lot of them will think that just hurt is being broken, and it's not. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll lead them into the brokenness the way the gospel defines it and say, look, you know, um, we need to confront this and allow, right. you know, just go through it and allow it to pass through you, and, and Christ will take care of it. Mm. Also, um, you know, we'll teach men about authority. A lot of people, a lot of the men have trouble with authority right. because they haven't seen a biblical authority authority that truly cares for you right and will discipline you not to punish you but to lead you in the right, right. ways yeah father mm -hmm. you know a, a, what is what does hebrews talk about i mean a father who loves chastens chastens that's right, right. that must be uh, that must be and, and and correct me if i'm wrong but that that has to be one of the, the hardest parts about what you do is teaching them that the the, right. the, the biblical authority well, for, for someone who has a problem maybe with authority, that's got to be a hard process. Lordship's a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Lordship is where we have to start. But check it out. You know, um, we're, we're redoing some of the curriculums and stuff. And, mm. and, you know, Matthew, Jesus, it says, you know, after he faced Satan, he goes. And then the first thing from there on, he said, mm. repent for the kingdom of God is near. Amen. And right there is, you know, I'm broken. Repent. You know, I need your help. And then bring me into this kingdom. Let me live under right. this authority that's going right. to care for me. And you know, it, and you hearken to where Jesus comes across the centurion, and the centurion says, "I'm a man that knows authority, right. not a man with authority." Right. right. And, and so he's saying, "You see this emblem? Yeah. This, they could kill me. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of people that are going to come behind me with power. Right. And yeah. that's what it is in, in Christ. You know, Amen. Um, Amen. coming into that kingdom. So we we learn the lordship." And then we teach them to assume their right position, submission to lordship, right. and submit to that authority. Right. Uh, that that's that's gospel gospel centered authority in Jesus Christ first and foremost. Right, right, but, right. And another thing, you know, the word authority is a sticking point. The word of submission is a sticking point for right. a lot of these men because it's like grovel. You know, what's submission? Submission, right. and what we teach is brother, submission is assuming your rightful place. Right. You know what I mean? Amen. We're yeah. all we teach that we're all on a ladder, mm -hmm. and look, right now this is your wrong, right? And I hope that your wrong surpasses my wrong. That's, That's right. What I'm here for. You, you know? want to grow. You want to yeah. keep going. So. Yeah. When when these men, uh, and I, I guess we'll kind of speak in generalities with this question, but when when these men come, uh, the fir at, at first to his oaks, right? Um, are they are they seeking a particularly quote unquote religious experience, or are they or is it something that's presented to them like once they get here? I mean, that's no. You have to be a believer. There are a few requirements. Okay. There are a few mm. requirements for his oaks. You've got to want and change. Mm. That's the number mm -hmm. right. one thing. When Amen. You've got to be a believer, and then in that first thirty day period, you're getting the gospel, and then at the end of that thirty day period, it doesn't mean you're going to stay with us. It means we make you know we're going right. to see. Did you accept the gospel? Is there well, fruit that's worthy of well, well, that was my next question. I mean, have you, I mean, I'm sure that this has happened, but I mean, have you encountered those who come through your doors who claim to be Christians who, you, yeah. you, you know, who are not? Yeah. Maybe they didn't understand or may, the gospel. Or, or maybe put on a show and pretend they maybe, are? Maybe, I don't right, know, yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. That falls away. You mm. can't right. do it because, you, right. God, look, so we believe, man. That's interesting. We, we'll say his oaks, you know, we call it a program because we really don't know what to call it. Right, yeah. And it's a good it, description, but, yeah. But what it is is we put um, we put a parameter of structure and discipline right. around you. And then in that, we teach you these biblical things. But most of all, we watch the orchestration of the Holy Spirit. Amen, yeah. He mm. will bring about circumstances that push on the very things that you need to deal with. It's right. like, and then we just kind of, you know, stay in the middle, stay yeah. in the middle, you know, <laughs> stay in the, you know what I mean? We just kind of right the ship. But, yeah. you know, it's, um, w we ourselves, the most important thing on that property is not the men, it's not staff, it's God. Amen. And it's our reconciling, rec rec reconciliation to him. Right. And, and 
<laughs> you know, yeah. adhering to his sound doctrine. Amen, brother. It's the only way your mind is transformed, and that's Amen. how this happens. Am I getting what you're saying? Or yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That, 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 well, that it, it's that interesting because you know, going down the road, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, it, it's interesting because I mean, um, as as I was reading up on the website and stuff, and, and obviously I've known you for a while, and um, you have a a, a great um, I I guess it's more of a, like a key point on your website where I, we 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 already talked about it's not a rehab center. Um, you called it uh, on the website. We are a discipleship ministry, mm-hmm. mm. um, and I thought that was a really interesting way to put it because there's almost a uh, a great commission aspect of this too. It's exactly mm. you know what I mean. That's uh, all it, there is, as a, Adam, yeah, you know? so it, I thought that was a cool aspect of it as well. Where yeah, it's it's you know uh, re- as, rebirth, spiritual rebirth, but it's also a discipleship. So as you just asked, you know this conversion. God didn't say go make converts. Right. He said make disciples. Make disciples. Make disciples. Right. Amen. And right. as you know, Hebrew says doers of the word. Right. We were out probably um two three years ago, and we were out at a church. You know, living proof. Not far yeah, from yeah, here. yeah. We were, we Pastor were, Pat. Yeah, yep. right. We were talking before it. <laughs> We were talking before the congregation and just giving some testimonies. And two or three guys got up. And when we left there, I was so impacted, man. Because the guys didn't say Trevor says. What they said was Trevor does. Mm. They were watching me. I'll tell you what, like like I just told you guys, I went through um, me and my wife and the whole house. We just went through this sickness. Right, right. People long, don't, long sickness. People don't yeah. watch you right. in abundance. They watch you in lack. Amen. They see mm. how you handle with the problems. When I was in the Amen. construction trades, you wouldn't believe, you know, guys would show up at my truck early in the morning and mm. want to talk because they seen how I went about my life. Right. Mm. You know, look, you lift Christ up high, people will be drawn people, on to people him. People see him. It is. Absolutely. So it's not a con- it's not a conversion, it's mm. a discipleship and then that's and then coming into the lordship and you know that's what the cross does for us. There's that objective work of Christ. He Amen. came to destroy the work of the enemy. Amen. And then there's the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. So once you're justified by the cross, we begin to be governed by right. the Holy Spirit. You know, Amen. So. Absolutely. Absolutely, brother. Well, I, I you know, obviously I, I want to talk more about his oaks, but I, wa- I kind of want to start at the beginning. Yeah. I want to start at the beginning yeah. of, of Trevor. Uh, tell us about your, your early life. Like, where did you grow up? I grew up in Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay. Which Connecticut I, boy. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, Amen. Th- then I moved off to New York for a little while, which, and now I've got a very messed up accent that, <laughs> you know so uh but it, it doesn't matter because the trevorisms just blanket it all you know and if you're around me any any uh any length of time you, you'll get to speak my language or un- at least understand what i'm saying but um so you grew up in you grew up in connecticut and then moved to new york when when, when did you move to new york in my uh in my teen okay mid-teens um you know that's a whole nother thing but Basically, I was, uh, I grew up in a household, you know, my father used and, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's what I saw at the age of nine. I smoked my first joint. Mm-hmm. My mom hates when I talk about this, but my mom's got to understand that this is, it wasn't her fault. This mm-hmm. ain't, this isn't their fault. It's just what happened, you know, and I, I was yeah. responsible for my, my choices, you know, so like. Mm. By nine, I, 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 my father used to have marijuana, and I would take a little bit, and I would right. go hang out with the guys down the street, you know, right. and the older, harder guys, and that's mm. what I always aspired right. to be. Be one of those so, those guys, right. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, understand that just led to harder drugs, you know. And you know, thirteen, I was doing, you know, hallucinogenics things like that. And mm. by sixteen, I would, had to have a drink in the morning to stop the shakes, mm. you know. Mm. And then. Um, and my father died, and the restraint that was in my life had just been torn away, you know. Mm. Mm. And I, uh, I found myself doing hard time in prison, and uh, you know, maximum security. Wow. You know, mm. just turned eighteen and sentenced as adult before I was oh, eighteen, Lord. and you know, doing some hard time in prison. And um, like I said, I aspired to the hard guys. Right. Um, what I found out later through some of the stuff that we teach in the program through biblical application was right. that my greatest gift was compassion. It was my heart. Amen. Mm. But the enemy made me feel that that was weakness. That that was weakness. Right. 
So, you know, he often does that. Yeah. Right. Makes yeah. you think that your strengths are weaknesses. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and so I tried to kill it away. I yeah. tried to kill it away with violence and mm. alcohol and, mm-hmm. and all of these things. Then I get to prison, man, and I see these guys. I mean, I'm among killers. There are guys mm. doing triple right. life. You know, this was in the 80s. The prison system right. was far from what it, there were it no today. rights, you know. Right. And, uh, well, there were rights, but not like, not like today. Um mm-hmm. So I get there, man, and I start hearing the gospel, like the real gospel, man. <laughs> and I said, I'm like, that's the toughest thing I ever heard. Amen. Amen. You know, and it just it broke my heart. Amen. You know, and yeah. it's been a long ride. It's been a long road since then. Amen. But um, there was a conversion, man. There was fruit Praise worthy God. of repentance. Amen. You know, I'm talking Praise to God. these guys Amen. that were never gonna breathe free air again. Yeah. Amen. They were freer than I had ever Amen. been in my life. Amen. Amen. You know, so was, uh, can, can I ask a question? I yeah. mean, as far as as far as uh, was it was it a chaplain that, that was sharing the gospel? No, it, was it was a pastor. It was hardcore convicts. Oh, really? They they were sharing the gospel. Yeah. Wow! Praise God! I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. No, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Praise God for the change and everything. Yeah. Praise God, man. That's I, and, awesome. Uh, just, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to note, derail I you. Just yeah. got, um, I just got my background check okay, so I can go into the prisons. I'll be doing the orientation. Wow. Into, that's awesome. uh, yeah, and, and that's really where my heart is. And it's not just for um guys in prison, man. It's just for guys in bondage. Amen. Yeah. That's that right. just don't know. You that know, I was muddling. Gospel, I was yeah. muddling my way through life, yeah. not knowing. You know. So. Yeah. Amen, brother. So all right. So um, you get out of prison, and what what happened next? What was the What was the first thing you did? Where'd you go? I, I began to mess up. Mm. I started, and then I got into the rooms. I was trying to, you know, what had happened was, and this is where we mm. learn about repentance worthy, of, of fruit worthy of repentance. Right. I realized that what the prison was doing for me, I had all this knowledge come to me about Christ and mm. this and that, but the discipline of the prison, when that right. fell away, yeah, uh, uh, my discipline fell away. So mm. there had to be a true change. Look, man, if a man is in Christ and he's a new creation, Act like one. Yeah, yeah. Begin right. to take the things and apply it. Right. Become to do a doer. As Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? right. You know what and, I mean? Right. As yeah. John says, right. look, Absolutely. this is what I love. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it's the first epistle of John says that, look, man, we now do these things because he first loved us. Right. It's yes. not, I, I don't have a responsibility to God. I have a response out of my ability right. because yeah. he first loved me and now I'm bestowing that upon him. You know, he says, look, you know, he says, they'll come to me, you know, and they'll say, but when did we do these things for you? Right. You know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you, you uh, clothed me, yeah. visited me in prison. When did we do these things to you? Yeah. When you did it for the least of these. Amen. He's not talking about the church. He's talking about humanity. That's right. And the thing is, the motive of those people were so clear. Yeah. They didn't even know what they were doing, you know, and that's where we want to be. That's one of the things we want to teach. Look, it's great to, you know, you get caught at something and, and you cop to it, but we want to move the motive right. to not being sincere after being caught to the pre- you thinking it through before you enter into right. the action, you know. Right. So, you know, motive is a big thing that Amen. we work on. Praise mm-hmm. God. The pure yeah. in heart will right. see the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. So what was what was the turning point? You know, we're talking about after after you you get out of prison, right? You 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 know uh, learn you're learning, right? Yeah. Uh, what was the turning point for you where it's like, okay, I need to kind of buckle down here and, and get these disciplines in in line here? Like, what's... I, I w- well, I was hitting and missing, hitting and missing, yeah. hitting and missing, you know. And but this God thing was always going on, man. And then I met my beautiful bride. And Shell reminded me something. <laughs> when I met Shelly Ed, mm. right then I wanted to be a better man. Amen. Mm. And then that harkened me back to when I met Christ, how he made me to be a better man. Amen. You know, and then it began to solidify. It's funny how that, how that works. First Peter uh, talks about how marriage is a sanctifying thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's paraphrase, but that's what it is. It's funny what that'll do to a man. It'll yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yep. man. Changes everything. <laughs> it changes everything. A, a good Amen. Life is a gift from God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Truth. That's right. That's awesome. So so but when yeah. when uh when are we talking? What's the time like? When when did you get married? Me and Shell, we well, we did everything backward. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> we had kids, and then you know, and then yeah. we bought a house and started businesses, and then we got married. We were in a church, like we are. Uh, so, 
I wasn't really practicing when I had met right. her, but things were still there. And, <laughs> you know, I was trying to do it an hour in my flesh. And right. I had this gospel that wasn't a gospel, but I was trying to not fully sure. understanding. Somebody started sure. winning to us, got us into a church. And I remember, you know, meeting with the pastor and stuff. And the pastor says, you, you know, you guys, we had this house. It was a 3,000 square foot house. And um, we're yeah. living together and, and they, you know, you know, you guys shouldn't be having sex until right. you're married. Right. <laughs> you know, and he says, and I, I always pastor, knew she yeah. was, you know, I said, oh, well, can you do it now? You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, what do you want to do? it? Let's do it, you know. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, we're going to take a period. I'm going to counsel you a little bit. So it was about a two-week period where she slept at one end of the house and I slept at the other. And, um, you know, we, we started going about it. We started... Uh, Making those changes, right, absolutely. Yeah. Praise God, Amen. And wow, so uh, that's that's awesome. Your your, uh, your professional God. life as as it was going on through this. Um, did you know from the beginning that you wanted to work with um, men that were struggling? No, oh, man. Look, um, so like my, my professional life, I was I was a stonemason when I was younger, and mm. then I I went into the union and became a brick and block mason. And, and I loved that, man. I aspired to be that. It mm -hmm. was so gratifying. And I felt I was so grateful when I was doing it to, to find, right. look, man, a man that does what he wants to do yeah. will never have a problem doing it. That's right. Amen. But at the same time, man, whenever I looked behind me, there were men following me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't you don't, want, don't come over here. <laughs> You're going the wrong way, you know? <laughs> um, and look, man, honestly, w one of the reasons, like, so, some of the thoughts, you know, you hearken back to things of, uh, you know, when you need a little bit of motivation, not inspiration, because I'm always inspired by the Word of God. Right. It's yeah. the inspired Word of God, and it inspires Absolutely. me. But sometimes, yep. man, I need to get over a hump. And, and one of the motivations I use is that there are two guys, there are two guys that followed me into a place they would have never went on their own. Amen. They would have never done the things they did, mm. you know, if they weren't following me, you know, and I... I cost them years man mm -hmm. and, and i sometimes hearken back to that i pray for them and, and i think about you know man that's because they followed me yeah. they would have never done those things right so you know i hearken back to that but like i said um and, and not that not that i'm a leader i'm just um like i said well, god puts always, you in that position right, right? Were, i feel the same way me, it's you know? like that people mm -hmm. follow you for you right. know what i mean and that's the positions that god puts you in in that particular time and and, and he just keep, continually does it even as much as you don't want it you're kind of like all well, right you, you know sure I mean? you right. sure i know yeah. sometimes i know yeah, yeah. you know and, what i mean but, but yeah there's another thing with authority you know we were talking about authority <laughs> earlier I've been in a few programs, man. I've been around a few programs, and and people who want authority don't always count the responsibility of authority. No, no they don't. Tim, I mean, you know, Adam, you know, as being a father, that mm -hmm. I, I don't never want to stand before God and answer for what I did to one of His lambs. Right. Yeah. That Amen. wasn't of Him. You know what so I mean? So true. So very true. It, that's it, the it, burden it, of a spiritual leader. Yeah. Right. Amen. But, and that's the that's the motive of a leader. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. So. Right. Amen, brother. So how did this opportunity with His Oaks come about? Well, I was serving down in, um, after uh, I've got out of the past 31 years, I got about 24, 25 years clean. So I would have a problem, and then I would get straightened out, and I would have a problem. And, and me and Shell at the time were separated, and I, I couldn't get myself back. So I went to a, uh, a faith-based program down in Tennessee. Yeah. And um, I was there, I finished the program, and then Amen. there were these series of events, and it came to be I was running the program. Wow. You know what I mean? Praise and, um, you know, I was wow, doing, that's I, awesome. I was doing, well, huh. it was, well, look, man, this is what it is. Well, like, you're talking about people, you know, uh, well, just, you know, following you, you're the natural leader, God give you those gifts, you know, you know what I mean? That's right, yeah. I, I learned something recently about redeeming the time yeah I, I i hear people talk about god will redeem the time and i read it in the bible and stuff and, and there is this like incantation like inkling that i had that redeeming the times means all this prosper was going to come my way and stuff like that but i realized what it is is that um for for me in my mm. opinion i'm talking opinion right. here 
is that like um all the things the enemy had meant for bad yeah God shows up with them all that's, at one time to use for good. You amen. Know? And that's the amen. redeeming of the amen. time. None of God it was is so frivolous. Good to us. Though I thought these were meaningless tasks. Right. They were building a muscle in me or they were providing something. Amen. So anyway, I, I was there and um, <laughs> I was there and things got sideways. And I came back to Connecticut. Me and Shell were living in Scotland. I got on the bus from there. I had nowhere to go. My grandmother, you know, they had been through it with me before, and she said, uh, look, man, you could come here and live, but you can only stay a day. So mm -hmm. I'm leaving Tennessee not knowing. Shell was, you know, talking to a divorce lawyer, the, you know, the day I got on the bus, and I got to get on the bus, man, and it, it opened. Like, everything that, you know, when, something, when right. it's time to move on from something, right. you'll not no longer have grace to do that thing right like because grace is more than not getting what i deserve but it's the ability to do what i can't yeah. you know <laughs> what i mean and, and then you depend on god and that's that's grace. right amen um so i got on that bus i make my way back to connecticut and i was distraught man they had put me through the ringer down there yeah um, um with accusations and abuse and it's just i get back man and i'm like I'm distraught, and I'm thinking, man, there are no men of God. There is no, you know, this and that. I, I was just down, but I knew now, but man, mm. now I got, right. I was doing his work. Right. I was really doing his work. There was a man there that um that had died, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, unfortunately, and I got a call from his mom, and his mom said I was the only good thing about the program. Mm. That, you know, mm, when he had God gotten home that... I was, you know, that God had used me, not right. that I was, Amen. but that I was an avenue through which he saw God, right. Amen. You know? So, um, I got back and, um, I, I, I knew I had gotten bitten, man. I wanted to work in ministry, mm -hmm. you know, and I started, so we started looking around, we started looking around and, um, nothing was happening. And then, um, a counselor that we use at the house made a suggestion to me and he said, Look, man, there's this place, His Oaks. Why don't you go, you know, talk to them? And then I came in contact with Chris Nickerson. Yep. And um, believe it or not, man, Chris restored my belief in men of God. Amen. You know, I was, I was um, some of the things, the first time I met with him, and this is typical of Chris. Chris said, come on, we'll go out to have breakfast. I sent my resume over. <laughs> and he says, come on, I want to talk to you, man. We'll go out and have breakfast. And for four hours, right, we talked. Well, you know, that sounds like Chris. Me Chris you know? Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. With Chris, him. if you're no. listening to this, yeah. I was gonna say, I've had breakfast with Chris before. Yeah, I know exactly too. what you're I talking know, about. I know. Uh, but, but four, look, four hours? That's it. But he, you know, he he he, he said things in, in that time. Yeah. Of yeah. things that I really believed that the way I understood the Bible, he had said them back to me that I wasn't seeing in other right. places. I remember one of them distinctly was. I always, I've always thought that money is a tool. Mm. Money is a tool, and 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 that's its rightful place. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember him saying that to me, and it blew my mind because mm. I had never uttered it out of my mouth mm. to anybody else. Right. But he was. That's how he went about it. This right. is why you know. This is why we get this to do that. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and we're gonna, you know, good stewards of it. And uh. I'm really grateful for Chris. I mean, and that's a good man. You know, so uh, so the next thing you know, he said, "Well, why don't you come over and and, and volunteer for a little while, and, and we'll see what's going on." So that was November. That was November thirteenth of fourteen, maybe. Oh. And I started volunteering. They told me, "Yeah, be here at a certain time, seven o'clock in the morning." I'm knocking on the door, you know, ready to go, <laughs> and uh, and I've not left. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, Praise God. You know, that's awesome. Kind of awesome. went from there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, what was it like at first, of being there? <laughs> what were the first few weeks like? It was. Paint me a, a general um, picture, I guess. <laughs> well, was I mean, it had to be an eye opening. I would no, but because look, man, you think that you're going somewhere to minister, right? And you're being ministered to, right? Mm. Uh, God, you know, you never arrive. Amazing thing. This is this is why God is a good father. He when is. I arrived there, I realized that, okay, this is what you're going to learn today. Amen. Look, man, when I got there, there and still, man, I was thinking this morning, you know, 
I've just recently began to obtain Christian and spiritual maturity in my life. And I don't mean I'm a spiritual giant. I mean, I know that I need more maturity. Well, we, we, <laughs> yeah. you know that's, I mean? that's the first step uh, towards say, maturity is, is acknowledging uh, that, right. that we need to grow. Uh, We're that, that's a that sign of a mature Christian is right. acknowledging that you right. need to still that grow. I, yes, right. <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing. Yeah. The first sign of wisdom is knowing that you don't know don't everything. Know, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, so, um, exactly. So Amen. anyway, Amen. you know, um, work began in my emotions, bringing my emotions under the government of the Holy Spirit. If I'm governed by my emotions, if I'm working out in my emotions, because right. I'm a very passionate person, right. but I'm not being governed mm -hmm. by the right. Holy Spirit. Right. So and, he had to do all that work. Right. right, and God continually doing that, not just not just through you, but 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 backwards through the ministry, through the men, and and uh, you know, I mean, it's funny. It's I feel the same way as a pastor. I think oftentimes it's it's uh god god puts us in these positions yes to minister to others but also for our own personal growth uh not because we're great men of god but because we're weak well, well we're right because we're willing <laughs> that's you right know, there's a lot that's to be right. said to look man ministry like i said before about authority if, if a lot of people don't truly know the responsibility of it they, they just think it's great to be in charge and i gotta tell you i'm in charge of very little. There's very little that's in, <laughs> under my control. I'm kind of, you know, just going through it and allowing God, you know, look, man, I love to be led by the Spirit. Amen. But I'm governed by the Word. Amen. You Praise understand? God. understand if what the Spirit would have us do or, or what I'm being prompted doesn't line up with the Word, then we wait till something happens that's comes right you know, so amen and, that's and the you've way to learn these discernments and we want to pass the spirit that's works another thing we teach is this discernment and uh i read a very interesting thing by about Spurgeon. you know spurgeon had said this oh, week yeah. um, oh you know that guy I, I, think, I, think, I think so we heard yeah, him i think i think, yeah. I, I, think <laughs> I think i mentioned him in the past maybe once but, or uh, twice i'll paraphrase <laughs> basically um he was saying that you know um you don't have to know right from wrong you've got to know right from almost right right you know and uh yeah. Sounds like a Spurgeon thing. That does. Yeah. That's well, right. And that's a paraphrase. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyway, that's I digress. Yeah. Uh, so what is it? All right. So, so 2014, you started His Oaks. Late 2014. Yeah. Um, how has your how has your position there changed <laughs> since then? Like, how, are, how, are you are you doing? Well, what, I think what has changed the program. When when I came from the other place. I was right. more authoritarian because that's mm. what they were. Now I, I think we're strictly like really authoritative, you know. Mm. So this organic okay. process came about where we learned, and and you know, look, man, hindsight is a hundred percent, and that's what we right. use. Well, well, just just uh, kind of just bring it back. I mean, like, but his Oaks was a relatively new ministry at that time too. Right. So it, yeah, well, it had only it was, been it was around. Probably it was. I think it so was. It was it's a year, been on year that property two? since twelve. Oh, two thousand twelve. So around that time. Been, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it, has, it, has, it wasn't up ministry, and run. So. I think for a year, they, Chris had just acquired right. the house. And yeah. Stuff. And so when you talk about like you know like just uh, you know it it kind of progressing and stuff like that over right. time. I mean, you were you were part of kind of. I mean, really. I mean, even, even the formative if, years. The formative yeah. years of this ministry. I mean, yeah. still still are. I mean, yeah. just uh, whatever. But anyway. I mean, but look, you know, so. It, it just, you know, organically came about. Look, my position is still, now I'm moving, you know, so I went from basically just being there. When I first got there, I was just kind of the guy who took the guys around, did the bottles and cans. We, you know, Fritz was there. Fritz right. Mauer, yep. And he was... Um, Great counselor. You know, yeah. he was the director. He was the counselor. There was another guy, Eric. We've had people from time to time come. Mm -hmm. But it's organically just filled out. And at the same time, I have, you know... Our yielding staffs yielding. We got Pastor Steve now, who's right. a great guy, a gifted teacher, loves the word. Mm -hmm. Chris, um, GW, we all are growing and moving, and and it, it's it's permeating. And this is what discipleship is. Right. The guys watch us live. We don't keep anything from them. We don't, you know. I live. Me mm -hmm. and shall live on premises. Amen. And they they see what goes into it on a daily basis. You know, that's great to have that example of, right. of of a godly man living there for them to example. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, absolutely. But anyway, yeah, I'm, yeah. So as I, so and now I'm moving into you know so I, I move from this thing to that thing to program director, and kind of you know um, 
kind of, I would say Chris is the executive director. I say I, I'm probably the director because I'm trying, you know, now I'm doing, um, I'm going around, I'm r raising awareness of his oaks. I'm doing mailings. I'm talking to people. Mm. I'm going for my, you know, I, I'm getting, right now I'm working on my bachelor's in ministry degree. Amen. Um, awesome. Because, and not, I, I don't feel that, you know, it's, imp I feel that there are some doors I won't get into unless I got the paper. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think I need the paper to minister, but, yeah. you know, right. it, it definitely helps yeah. open I, some I, doors. I can relate to that. A couple of years ago, I, I went back to school for my for uh, for my master's in, in Bible and because uh, I wanted to eventually get into youth ministry full time. Yeah. Amen. And I felt the same way. I, yeah. I was like, I, I have to I have to go back and get that, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, that paper, as you call right. it. I think that's you know, obviously, you know, God was was leading me in that direction. And, uh, you know, he's doing the same for you. Um uh, what have you uh, learned going back to school? You know, a, just a, a speaking in general. A tremendous amount. You know, yeah. I mean, I obviously mean, you're going to learn going back to school. But uh, yeah. what, what are some things God is God is teaching you? I mean, it, it, it's. Uh, Did you have all day? Well, uh, <laughs> it's teaching me discipline. Yeah, amen. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a big well, part okay, of it. Yeah. So the first thing was, and one of the reasons why I didn't do it, man. You know. I was afraid to do it. I didn't it's a scary think I thing. could do it. Well, I didn't think yeah, I could do it. To, look, yeah. I would not call my. I would look. Um, I could figure anything out on my hands. The best, the best compliment I ever got was a guy who used to work for me when I worked in the trades. When I was a mason, I also had my own company, and mm. he would run it during the day, right. and we would work at nights and weekends and stuff. And one day he just looked at me. And he said, "Man, if I'm ever on a sinking ship, I want you with me." <laughs> like, what kind of compliment is that? He says, because, dude, Amen. you ain't dying. I see you, he said, I see you that's work great. out all that's kinds so... of things, you know? So that's good. But to learn and to retain, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of it, you know? But mm. our counselor, Joe DeAngelis, he comes, you know, today. He'll be over at the house. Mm. He, he was always pounding into me, man, your brain has a plasticity to it. Mm. If you stay out of the ruts you're in, New ruts will form, mm, mm. you know, and that's and that's this great, is all biblical stuff. This right, is it is absolutely. I was gonna say, amen. Right, you know. So I was, I was more afraid, and then it emboldened me, man. I did my, um, I, I basically did my associates in about nine months, you know, and, and I just started doing it to see what I could do, and mm. then being the overachiever I am, you know, um, so that's the first thing that I learned was that I could do it. And that I wasn't stupid, mm -hmm. or I wasn't I wasn't less than anybody else, or anything, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 ain't that how God works, you know? That's right. Yeah. Just uh, kind of kind of get in, and I'll empower you. But, Amen. You know. So. How far are you in the process? So I just like I said, I just did all. I'm 67 credits in. Okay. I, I did. I I started on the associates, and then I started looking at the bachelor's. So I'm about 70, 73. Pretty far Credits in, then. in. Yeah. How many do you have to get for your bachelor's? 127. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're, yeah. you're more than halfway there. That yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very good. Um, going back to your to your uh, position at His Oaks, what's uh, what's a typical day like for you? Well, or is there such a thing as a typical day? Yeah, man, there is. <laughs> like you're always putting out fire. Well, sometimes you are. It depends the group of men that are there, and that as yeah. these things yeah. rise up. So, you know, the greatest thing about about ministry and um one of the things i hearken back to in the bible is that when jesus and these guys were going anywhere they walked mm. so mm. i would love to know those conversations right because when me and the guys are in the van we're going to pick up donations or drop off right. water bottles or this right. or that that's when the work is when we're gathered around the sorting right. table and the hands are busy this is when the issues right. hit you know what I mean? Well, like like the other day, I mean, you were out here because uh, you know we have a, we have a box for the cans out yeah. here for you. You were with uh, one of the fellows from I over there, Mike. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and uh, you know I was thinking about that, and I, I was thinking about it when I was a youth pastor. Uh, I used to have a big van like that that I would pick up the kids. Uh, you know, and uh, and anytime I had a, uh, it wasn't just a youth pastor, but others. But anytime I would pick them up. They knew that they were going to have a, a talk or we were going to have a good – they used to call it my conference room yeah, is yeah, what they used to call it. Is, yeah. That's all I was thinking is that, you know, but, but, but going back to Jesus, I mean, like those conversations that they had when they were walking, 
I mean, they, what, what amazing things that they learned from Christ and, and, and those, those days. We don't, know, day, we don't know what they were. But yeah. I, to be a fly on the wall for that. Right, absolutely. But my experience tells me that it right. was in-depth stuff or it was reinforcing what he had spoke about mm. the night before. Right. You know, yeah. and, and just – so anyway, a typical day, Adam, is – I'm usually up around. I'm usually my boots are usually on the floor by five. Yeah, you know, because I'm doing my school work then. Because I've right. got to do it when I can. Right, I'm doing my school work. I'm answering emails. Um, doing admin stuff. I got to keep logs and schedules and make notes and stuff like that. And then the guys are usually up. And I find, um, if I'm up early. They see my, you know, they'll come down. Now it's dark in the morning. They'll look down the end of the hall and the light's on. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get visitors, you know. Right. And, and so you're always available to them. Amen. But so then, um, you know, 7 o'clock is wake up, 7.30, breakfast. 8 o'clock is class. After that, we uh we do whatever we do. We go out. We usually work from 3 to 3.30. Um. TV is restricted. There's limited things, but mm-hmm. there's, you know, all kinds of stuff you could do, work out, and, you know, just all yeah. kinds of stuff. One of the things that we build into the program is free time. A lot of the other programs, and in prison, like I said, when I got out of prison, all the discipline was mm. gone. So if we provide you with free time, we want you. How are you going to organize it? How right. are you going to do it? And, and, and you guys have a so I mean, teaching just, opportunities there. Right. For exactly. That. Yeah. And it's a Within safe that free environment. Time. Everything yeah. is. This is a, a safe environment, man. Right. Make the mistakes. That's yeah. what we're not yeah. looking for. You know, nobody's right. nobody's going through it. Look at the disciples. Nobody went through it perfect. Right. And the facility yeah. over there, I mean, is gorgeous. The house and, yeah. and everything over there. I mean, I mean, just, you know, again, you know, beautiful gym over there. I mean, beautiful. You know, I mean, it's 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 really set up over there. Just practically well, we set up. You couldn't have planned it. Right. I mean, it's amazing. Not, could not have... And that's a whole nother story for, right. for, for oh, Chris, how they got the house and everything, which story. is it's all it's all God's grace but there. Look, but at, yeah, at this yeah. time, man, I'd like to invite anybody out in the area. You want to come see the facility. You want right. to come see what it is. You want to come talk to us. And not because you've got somebody in trouble, just because maybe you're interested in getting involved and maybe, um, you know, supporting us financially or right. volunteering or whatever. Please give me a call. Adam's going to put up my number later. That's my yep. number. Right. We're going to put a link in the description with uh, all the information for sure. And, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to show you around and talk a little more in depth, you know. Um, we're here for the community. We're Amen. not here. We're we're not only here for the men. Well, well that's know? the thing. Just just I don't know if we mentioned it earlier, but but his oaks is is directly adjacent, like literally butts up against the yep. property of Eastford Baptist Church. They are our next door neighbor, and literally, uh, yep. and literally right here in in town, and uh, and so here for the community. You guys have been here for for us as a church. Uh, more often than I can, I mean, even this past Saturday, we had some of the men over. They were helping with our wild game dinner, yep. and uh, and and you, you, it's just such a blessing to have you guys. It's such a blessing, brother, to to know you. I just want you to know that. Thank and, you. Uh, and there was a time people didn't yeah. want to know me. You know, well, uh, you know, <laughs> no. Uh, again, this morning in my quiet time, I was thinking about look. Yeah. I was down in Tennessee, man, and I was having a hard time yeah. I'm reading through. I think it's First Thessalonians. It might be Second. And this one little scripture hit me, and it's reminiscent of what you just said. It was, mm. you know, look, man, stand fast in Christ, for now we live. Amen. And that spoke volumes, because, like, it's, wow, I'm living. Mm-hmm. There are people around me, and if a man is in Christ, there is no condemnation. So Amen. stand fast in Amen. Christ. You know, and, and it really encouraged me, because I was contemplating there, man, what's going on? I'm looking around, I'm seeing all this stuff, man. And stand fast is an old military term. Yeah, it is. You know, and it just means, look, that piece of ground is as good as any other piece of ground. God has you in his hand. If something's (laughs) going to happen to you, it doesn't matter where you are. So just stand where you are. Amen. Praise God. uh, Praise God. But it was, you know, the scripture's this big. That's right, you know. know. And we mentioned uh, his oaks being a blessing to the community in, in several yeah. ways. Um, I want to touch on one specific aspect of, of, the, of the ministry over there. Um, and it comes with a little bit of a personal story, too, right. because uh, um, we know uh, uh, if you guys are listening to the podcast uh, or, or our frequent listeners in, in the beginning of our podcast about a year ago, we did our own testimony episodes, and right. uh, so uh, if you're a listener, you already know that uh, a few years ago I was unemployed for a few months, and um, um, I I will always and forever be grateful for His Oaks um, because you guys have a food pantry over there, and um, you uh, 
you uh, when when you found out about my my unemployment um i i was in need you know it was a tough time for my family and you you guys stepped up over there and uh um you uh trevor in particular i i i, I met with you a few times and you uh you opened up your food pantry to me and my family and uh i will always be grateful for that Amen. um it was it was a big deal it was a big deal and it helped us tremendously during that time and uh i like i said i'll always be grateful for that and um and, and i know that you've um that that food pantry you've helped um i'm pretty sure you've helped the eastford food pantry as well haven't you with that yeah monday's coming up the first of the month is coming up and look anybody so it's the sound of my voice it's awesome you need food you call me amen you know this is what this is what we're here for man i was happy to do it thank you but understand that that's accredited to god and more it is so that's, it is yeah look, it is and that's and this is one for of the sure. things i always tell chris you know these things people will chris will he'll accolades to me i'm like right. bruh yeah this is your umbrella i'm under you're right. making these things possible yeah. you know? the accolades go to god yeah, yeah. yeah everything that's goes but he but he puts you but, in that position to help and yes, it's he, and i'm happy to do yeah it. It was, and, 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 it was Ro- and romans does say to 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 acknowledge those who do good and yeah. brother uh yes it is all god's grace but we're very thankful for you yeah I, so. I, and, and, it, and you've always been a huge encouragement to me and uh you know personally and all the guys over there i mean over the years and everything yeah. else i mean yeah. it's they've done so much to help us as well as the church uh, and myself and but anyway yeah i was gonna say has the food pantry always been a uh a, a i almost i i I hesitate to call it a, like a sub ministry of the ministry there, but has it always been a part of the ministry over at His Oaks? No, um, when uh, there was an opportunity afforded to us, you know, it, um, and, and we just we began to serve, and that's what it came out of. It became, you know, somebody asked us to help, so mm-hmm. we began to help, and it began to bless us, and it's that, you know, that's how it came about, hmm. you know. And, so, and it amen. and it continues. And it continues. Amen. That's Praise awesome. God for that. Um, so, what are some of the? And I want oh. to call it a pantry. If somebody needs, oh, okay. some, because um, there are you know like food banks and stuff have to be under regulations. People call us from time Fair to enough. time, and we need you fair know, enough. I right. Mean, so you have that that available right, if they yeah, yeah absolutely fair yeah, enough absolutely. fair so. enough yeah. Um, I so call it a surplus. We have a food surplus. Food surplus. I like that. <laughs> That's right. Correction. Correction. My apologies. My apologies. Nah, no worries. Um, so what are you know? And we'll, we'll we're gonna uh, close here in about ten to fifteen. But um, I kind of want to get an idea of what are some of the most encouraging parts about. I want to touch on some of the more encouraging parts, and then maybe some of the struggles that you face with with your position over his oaks what are are some of the more encouraging like the best parts that you that you enjoy this is you know we talk about staff talks about like this is what we get you know this is you guys you you know this is what we get um and like i would what i would do i would i would liken it to the servants at the wedding right you know Hmm. mary tells christ to do this and he says you know and and then you know the servants are the only guys who they're carrying the water. Right. And they know that they know that this was water over there, man. Right. And it's yeah. wine over here. So yeah. they're kind of in on it. Yeah. So they kind of know right. what's going on. And, yeah. and that's what, that's what we get. Right. We get to know what we were in on. Um, hmm. That's you know, awesome. That's I, I can't analogy. tell you how many yeah. times I think that um, I've got to go over to the house and deal with something and it's weighing on my mind and I'm in prayer about it. And, um, and I get there, and there's a man weeping, saying, "Look, man, look what God showed me, and look, wow. and this is what I did wrong, and this is how I go about it." And he showed me, right. you know. And, and so you see God's hand and, well, and work right. there. Yeah. Well, I see a man now have his own relationship because Amen. He, he took our advice. You know, um, Amen. I had somebody tell me just last night we had a community meeting, and I heard him say, you know. Um, we go around, you know, what are you grateful for? And, and somebody remarked that I'm grateful for sound biblical teaching, man. People mm. would throw these scriptures at me and, you know, I didn't know what they meant or I didn't know how to operate in it. Mm. And now I do. So we're putting the footwork w- mm. with the application. Amen. Man. It's Amen. application, you know. That's right. So those, it's that kind of stuff, you know, you get um. You know, like the thing I told you about the guy in Tennessee, his mom calling me, you know, and saying, man, you were the avenue by which, you know, he saw God. And, mm. you know, mm-hmm. all that, that wow. that's the stuff, yeah. you know. 
Amen. So, that's an eye opener, isn't it? That is. That's just like look, that's man. Huge. But Whew. I gotta tell you, bro. There's an there's another side of this, man. I've been in this ministry, not this ministry, but I've been in men's ministry for about seven, eight years now, man. And I've seen six men that I've had contact with die. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's that side of it. Look, right. God's not kidding. I put I put before you life and death. What will you choose? Right. Amen. You know? And, and it, right. the saddest thing is to see a man not willing to go the next right. step. Right. You know, I was, that was going to be my next question was, what are some of the more discouraging parts? But that's got to be but up those, there. Those yeah. aren't, you yeah. know, even and those things aren't even discouraging. It shows me how important it is. Mm. You know, it, it shows me that, you know, and, and look, there are still families I'm praying for right. that that have lost a man. And I'm hoping that seed that was planted. Right. Up, and, and that's all we could do. Another thing that we teach is um, obedience. Right. You know, when I was in the rooms, when I say the rooms and AAA, right. that's what I mean. Right. They used to say they had a term called fake it till you make it. All right. Yeah. Well, the biblical aspect of that is be obedient until your heart changes. Right. But it also works sometimes because sometimes the dra- the heart will drag you along until the mind changes, until the obedience right. comes. You know, and we well, hope that that translates. Well, to well it's funny because in our very last episode, we were talking about the spiritual disciplines. Mm-hmm. We were going through Don Whitney's book on spiritual disciplines and how sometimes we don't feel like being disciplined in things like just the basics, like Bible reading and prayer and, and following Christ's commands and in, in all of these other aspects. And so, and sometimes it really doesn't matter how you feel about it, doesn't but God God will all. God will change how you feel right. eventually. He'll you know, give God, you a heart for if it. If Christ yeah. went with what he felt, we wouldn't be here talking about right. the cross. He Amen. He would have drank another cup. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's so. true. What What are some of the 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 key verses that 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 you kind of go back to? Galatians two twenty two twenty two twenty one two twenty two. Man, I have been crucified with Christ. Amen. And I no longer live. You know, um, the Christ, the life I now live is through Christ because He gave Himself because He mm. first loved me. That's a paraphrase. Um, John three seventeen. Everybody mm. knows what three sixteen says. <laughs> Who knows what three seventeen says? Anybody? Oh uh, yeah, no, you go right ahead, my man. He came to save the world, Amen. not condemn it. Amen. You know, because Amen. we used to. Uh, I don't want to be inappropriate, but there was a saying in the prisons and in in the life I mm. came out of, and that was FTW. You could imagine what that yeah. what yeah. that is. Yeah. Well, man, we have a saying. STW, mm. you know, and it comes from that scripture, save the world. Amen. You know, that's what he came to do, <laughs> not condemn it, but to save it. Praise you know? God. Amen. Praise God, man. So many people think, the world thinks he came to condemn it. They think he's a <laughs> condemning God. He's, he's just, just the judge, right? Yeah, right. Just yeah. only yeah, the judge, but yeah. He's not, you know, he, he's a judge who sat on past judgment and then stepped down and took the punishment. That's right. So you wouldn't have to, and, you know, Amen. and yeah. then empowers you to do what you can. I yeah, mean, that's it's right. amazing. Praise God. As we uh, as we look to close here in the next couple of minutes, uh, what, what do you what do you see as uh, as you look ahead to the future of His Oaks and uh, and the future of your ministry? What what are some of the things you're looking forward to? Look, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to the redeeming of the time, and we're seeing it. All the things we've been doing are becoming are beginning to take off, are beginning to get ground. You know, I expect that some, one day, you know, a bunch of people are going to show up and say, "Wow, look, this is new." No, it's not. Mm. You know, we've been doing it, you know, but now <laughs> what it is, is it's in order and in alignment with what God wanted. Amen. It's worked out the way he wanted it. And now it could, it's what I'm looking forward to is the establishment of his kingdom on that property and the spilling over of it. And, you know, we're a reflection of God to the men. And I'm looking forward to them being a reflection of God to the world. Mm. And, and then, the harvest coming, uh, and you know, um, I'm looking forward to a lot of things. I'm looking forward to, I, I want to say revival, but not revival as the mm. word would think revival, as repent, man, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. Let's, you know, he, he's going to be recognized for who he is, and mm. that's what we're trying to. Right. That's what we're conveying. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 you guys are doing excellent. I mean, uh, the 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 guys over there. I mean, uh, they they've been uh, coming for uh, basically the last year, um, either to church or to my Bible study mm-hmm. on Wednesday night. And um, 
and the group of guys over there, God is doing amazing things in, in their hearts and lives. Yeah, uh, I, I and would, it's I, amazing. I yeah. was telling one of the guys last night, you know, I was in gratitude. I was telling him, man, you know, I'm grateful for you. You really knocked some corners off of me. You don't mm. know how close you came to death. Mm. I mean, you know, you don't know. You almost right. didn't make your first phase. I was going to kill you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and even guys who come back, you know, uh, I had a, I got this little yeah. guy. I call him Tigger. He was, you know, just like Tigger, <laughs> like bouncing, so energetic. <laughs> and, you know, he'll come back every once in a while. He'll say, hey, Jerry, what's wrong, man? You don't love me no more? And I'm like, brother, <laughs> you haven't completed the you know, you having completed the program without me killing you should show you that I love you, you know? And, and I understand yeah. that might be harsh to some people, but it's, no. you understand that it's it's a different environment that it we is. came out of. And look, and I give directions like a New Yorker. Oh, if yeah, you're no, in, If you're in New York and you want directions, you, you look for a New Yorker. Yeah. You don't look for a tourist with a camera. No, no, no. And no. this is what we're doing with the men, you know? Amen. Amen. That's great. Well, Trevor, we're, we've reached the end of our time together, but uh, we, we, we look forward to what's to come. Yeah, Amen. we do too. And uh, yeah. we, we, we praise God for you and what you're doing over there, and we praise God for, for His Amen. Oaks. Um, guys, if, uh, if you want to support His Oaks, you can yes. do that. Uh, you can do that financially. Uh, you can do that with prayer, most importantly. You could do it with uh, donations, anything you don't want at home. Birthdays come, right. Christmas yep. comes. We're always, you know, taking things in for our. Uh, well, you do an annual tag sale, right? right. Yep. Yeah, now annual tag sale. It's coming up. EBay. Yeah. Oh, so you do eBay now too. Right oh, nice. Because look, very good. Um, we try to keep the amount low. You know, it's it's about four hundred dollars a month for a man to stay with us. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've never turned anybody away because they haven't had the money. And these are the ways we deflect the costs. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, and it's really, you know, you just call us. We'll arrange the pickup, yep. whatever. Guys, go to www.hisoaks.com. That's H-I-S-O-A-K-S dot com. Uh, for more information on the ministry or to donate, uh, you guys can call 860-942-2859. Again, we'll have all this information up in the in the uh, descriptions. You guys can uh, use that information. Uh, if you uh, uh, want to fill out an application, you can also do that through the webpage, I, I think, yep, right? You could do that through the webpage. Yep. You could call me. I'll call. mail you one, wh whatever you're comfortable. If you know somebody who's in prison who may be getting TS, who may be getting, you know, need a place to go when they get out, you could contact me and I work with the DOC. I work with the right. Danielson courts. I work with the parole officers and mm -hmm. the probation officers. I'll go to court and you know, for the man, whatever needs to happen. Amen. And they're also on Facebook as well, so visit their Facebook page. Again, that's uh, if you want to go to our website, www.hisoaks.com, 860-942-2859. Trevor, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys, man. It. And look, thank you, you very much. Said a lot Appreciate of nice it. stuff about Trevor and about his oaks, <laughs> and it goes both ways. Understand, man, you yeah. guys have been simply, this church has supported us from the beginning, mm. and, and we truly appreciate i appreciate the people out there who support us man thank you Praise thank God. you we can't do any of this without any of you you know the mm. guys love to come to the church so amen thank you for all you're doing thank, thank you. you for this opportunity I, i'd love to talk about amen. god and the things amen. he's done well we definitely amen. like to have you back at some amen. point Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that for the future but for now our time is up but uh but thanks again. We really appreciate it. Amen, Thank you. brother. Thank you. Amen. Uh, guys, check out Tim's Theology Thursday on YouTube. Tim is going through the book of Revelation. So yep. check that out. One coming out uh, mañana. That's, so, ooh, well, we've got another one coming up. Well, whenever this so, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, tomorrow as we record this, but yeah. it, it will probably Talking have already the... been out by the time this comes out. Yeah. Um, don't forget, guys, we also have our Gospelishes giveaway from last week. We're giving away a copy of Final Word by John MacArthur. Uh, so uh, check out uh, YouTube and like or comment, or actually comment or subscribe to our YouTube channel to be entered to win that free book. Again, Final Word, Why We Need the Bible by John MacArthur. Check that out. Uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Find our videos right here on YouTube. Audio versions of this podcast are on iTunes, Podomatic, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Tune in where all your podcasts are offered. You can tell I've read this quite a few times, right? <laughs> 50, almost 50 times now. Yeah, that's right. Where all your podcasts are offered, guys, subscribe, like, share. Go ahead and just attack that notification bell. That's right. The notification bell will let you know when our videos are posted, so check that out. It also helps us with YouTube and uh, it, uh, the visibility of our videos. Pound that notification bell. Tell everyone that you know about Gospelicious Radio. Spread 
the gospelicious word, mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the gospelicious word, people. That's right. Until next time, for Pastor Tim Howard. All right. Happy painting and God bless, my friends. This is Adam Miner. <laughs> and this is Trevor Primus. Have a good one. We'll see you next All time. All right. Bye, Bye everybody.